Hi there. Well, as you see here, some of my previous taxidermy, many of which are lasting up to 20 years now without a problem at all, so the method does work. Um, I'm not a professional taxidermist, I've said this over and over again. I'm a professional artist and painter, and my brushwork has been used on these fish mounts that I do, although I should really uh, learn about and get into airbrush work because I see it's far superior to some of the stuff I'm doing. Anyway, one of the most recent questions I've had um, was about uh, painting uh, rainbow trout and a speckled trout. Speckled trout we don't have, I suppose the nearest is going to be a sea trout. And I thought, well, I'll try and help out a bit here, because although I hope to do a, a um, larger pike and uh, a rainbow in the future, and I certainly, when I do the rainbow, will put it on um, to YouTube by all means for you to see and hope it's successful. But the question was, the colours for it, well, it's a bit like a piece of string, that, because it's like saying, what colours do you use to paint a face? Every light situation is different. Um, but basically, for painting fish, yes, we do have a certain series of uh, colours or a palette to use for those particular fish. Um, you do need to take photographs of your fish when you catch them. This is one of the most vital things to have really good studies. To have photographs, close-ups of the eye, the face, the, uh, the colours on the tail, the fins, everything else, before it loses its colours, as it will do. When they come out fresh, they're at their best. So that's when you need to photograph them. In this case, um, as, as you haven't got the colours, and I haven't got them, then you might have to use other people's resource books and so on, which is fine. Um, if you don't wish to kill the fish or the animal, then I have done this before with uh, other uh, fishermen who haven't wanted to, for instance, kill specimen carp or large fish. And we've actually drawn around the fish, taken lots of photographs, taken measurements, and I've built polystyrene fish um, in another technique altogether. In other words, made, an, a, um, in other words, made a model fish. Um, here you see that I've already made um, the wood carving, so I mean it's quite practical and fun to make traditional wood carvings of fish, which I made hundreds of years ago. These days we've got more modern material. Styrofoam is one of the best and a slightly harder material and smoother um, to finish than polystyrene. Uh, but polystyrene, some of, the, some of the stuff I've got outside here, here you see some. Now I just cut this into blocks. It's very cheap to get hold of. It comes with packaging materials quite often, um, so you can pick it up from the tips or whatever. Um, I just use that to shape for my body formers, for the birds and so on, and it's quite handy for fish as well. And I have used it for making models, and here are some examples of the way that I've done those models. Now you see here a, uh, a brown trout, there's been carp, I've done huge catfish, I've done, um, I've done rainbow trout, I've done brown trout and I've done uh, sea trout. Um, and it did save actually killing those actual fish. These are models made from uh, dimensions and measurements that I've taken from the real things, so they could be returned. You don't get the perfection, you don't get the same feeling, you don't get all the little marks and the, car and the, the scales and so on which you would get with the real fish, um, but nonetheless it gives a very good idea. And uh, if you're against actually killing the fish, well, it's probably far better for you as well. So anyway, how do we go about doing this? Um, well, we go about doing it by cutting a block uh, which is the same size as the fish and then putting the angles and elevations onto it, the side elevation and the top elevation, and cutting away those basic shapes. And then we round it off as you would for an ordinary body form of going inside a fish and carve in the details. With polystyrene, um, with polystyrene foam, then it's a bit rougher, and so I normally put a very thin coating of filler over the surface, and I mix that coating with a little bit of PVA glue to give it a bit more plasticity, not quite so brittle, and doesn't powder away so easily. Then I sand and smooth that down to a fine finish, and use um, plastic or acetate and so on for the fins. So there's all sorts of fun ways you can do for making a model fish. So let me just show you that way, and then we'll go on to the materials for actually painting it, which is what the original question was. As I'm not using airbrush techniques here, as I haven't spent lots of money on compressors and expensive airbrushes and paints, all I use are acrylic paints, and also some rather special, I will show you them now, um, powders, which uh, react to light and also are slightly pearlescent, so they give this luminosity that, um, that shines across the fish and the colours change with the light, like a rainbow trout for instance. And you can mix this with um, PVA medium. Well, this is what I mean by the PVA medium. This one's a matte acrylic medium, but I mean, I'm going to varnish it later anyway. But just mix a little bit of this with water and some of the pearlescent uh, powders 
and it will then give a lovely sheen and glaze to the fish which we afterwards will uh, varnish. I usually use a spray picture varnish. Now to do this um, we normally prime and paint the finished fish and then start to work up our undercoats. For instance for a rainbow trout I've advised using again an acrylic car body paint. Um, chrome is great for that. Spray it all over with that so it's got a couple of coats and then we can work the fine washes and glazes of ordinary acrylic paints working from the white underneath cream gradually round blending it in and then the deeper greens on the top coming around to the very top of the fish where you go almost black. Having got those all blended in and looking really nice we can then paint the spots and so on the colours of the fish in the brown trout, the browner colours and all the, the yellows and the, the browns coming in over the side and the red spots and then finally we can use this stuff and the pearlescent paint to glaze those tints of lovely um, glowing pinks, purples, blues, reds up and make the fish look as if it's got this lovely sheen of a rainbow trout or a trout. So fairly simple ways that you can make your own model fish. So let's have a look now in detail at how we can go about this and then you can have some fun and just play for yourselves, either making them in wood or in polystyrene or in, in foam or whatever. Um, and it saves you having the actual fish and it also gives you a chance to practice as well before you do have your actual fish and try mounting it yourself. Might just be an idea, a bit of fun for you anyway. OK, I hope that answers the question that the gentleman gave me about what colours to use for the spotted trout and the rainbows. It's a start until I actually do one or until, you actually, until I actually have photographs of my colours until I actually produce that. Um, myself, I can't really demonstrate it to you. The best I can do is this for the moment.